okay you meant to say the shadow of the object falling on the surface that is what how do, how we understand okay so to explain the difference between the shade and shadow is the shadow is is formed when there is a light from other opposite opposite direction okay so light is falling in certain certain direction and the shadow falls on the surface okay through the ground lines okay opposite to the light and shade is the a particular uh, shadow that is actually casted on the object opposite to the light okay that is how we understand about the shade and shadow okay so now uh, <clears throat> no i think the rest of the entire presentation will be very very simple just basic about cyography uh, so here you see in the picture itself in the image you see there is so many you know different forms of shadow and shade so uh, you can basically see here in the image in the image over here you see this this is the wall a certain wall and you have uh, some kind of a, a charger or roof or slab and here you can identify the light is falling from certain direction so it must be in this direction the light is falling in such a manner that only some part of the you know surface is exposed to the light and some parts are getting shadow because of the presence of the some kind of a object or opaque object okay some solid surface some solid form some solid uh, you know uh, let's say uh, uh, any kind of materials so, so here you see uh, this some dark surface dark area that is what we call as a shadow because it's falling on the surface of certain uh, object now this particular thing is the shade okay this is falling on the you know uh, object after the formation of the uh, shadow so here the shadow is generally much darker than the shade okay so wherever you see you, you might you might observe that thing uh, when you uh, look in the reality you look at the uh, surroundings you look around where there is a you know very high intensity of sun or some light you will see observe these two differences the shadow will be darker and the shade will be little bit lighter and that is casted on the surface on the object so moving forward uh, you just see uh, have a look through these books and references so these references have some certain you know uh, uh, techniques which you can learn through uh, like uh, of the different object different cyography uh, techniques presentation of 2d and 3d etc so i recommend these two books and there are some other numerous books available online and the one which you have with you uh, the author's name is thomas i think that is uh, teja had uh, shared with me so that book uh, will also be having some parts of the cyography so what we call as a shade and shadow and uh, so you see the different forms of showing the uh, shadow and shade like you have certain kind of a cube and uh, you have a, like a shadow falling on a certain uh, ground surface and here also you have certain kind of a axonometric views and uh, you you are able to show some cyography and here you have a, a roof plan suppose you have a site plan you are you want to represent some you know very uh, good presentation showing the site plan where you have different form of blocks different buildings and different buildings have a different heights so cyography will help you to identify the you know like the height differences uh, i'll show you in some the presentation that uh, you have a uh, some high rise building and you have some low rise building so when somebody is seeing from the top so he will be able to identify that suppose there is a sun falling on those uh, buildings then you can identify how tall is that building through the cyography itself the length of the shadow will definitely you know show you the height differences is it so so you see this is how uh, uh, without the cyography and this is with the cyography okay and
and here uh, as we see the concept of a psychography is all about shades and shadows and uh, here you can see specifically about something called a pergolas on the top and the direction of shadow also gives you indicates the angle of the light okay angle of the source of the lights is it so here we can identify it might be something like uh, maybe technically we can say it is 60 degree uh, you know uh, direction of the lights or sometimes we can say it is a 45 degree direction of the lights so likewise we have to technically define the psychography so and psychography uh, also has a very good uh, you know the form of uh, showing the technical presentation of a drawing uh, which uh, you can play with a different form of uh, lights you can show some light the position of the light so show this is the position of the light and this is the angle of reflection or or shadow so and this is the length of the shadow that is uh, depending on the height of the source of the light also so that what we are going to learn and uh, apart from that uh, there is something called uh, you know what we call as a uh, different source of light one is what something is we take it as a parallel source so mostly the parallel source means mostly available from the sun because the sun is the distance of the sun is so far that you cannot identify the angle of the you know like uh, and uh, how much Uh, what is the angle or the conical angle of the uh, sun uh, light of the sun is coming so we the usually re, you know at indicate it as a, a parallel source of light so you have all the light falling in the parallel manner while you have a something called a point source so different from the parallel source and the point source is point source has a angle angular form of you know light sources so in that case there is a conical version and the parallel is a mostly parallel projection that is what we learned in the until now we have learned about the parallel projection so this light is also taken as a parallel source of the light and point source which you have certain kind of a lamp or some street lights or some kind of a you know uh, a camera suppose position somewhere so from there you are putting in some kind of a source of light then you will have some kind of angular version okay some uh, you know you can define the width of the a uh, shadow is widening up so there will be some difference okay so that you see the parallel uh, source of the light how it is casting the shadow and uh, point source of light uh, has uh, some different casting of the shadow and uh, identifying the shadow in different forms like what we call as a bas and relief form you know what is bas and relief Uh, bas and relief uh, must have been taught to you in your basic design in the basic design was it taught uh, are you aware of this no sir bas and relief no bas and relief uh, okay okay maybe uh, let us uh, have a look at the history books you can uh, see some of the images in the history books you can see some you know there are so many carvings are there okay so there is a original surface and from the original surface we consider it as a zero level okay now when something is getting uh, you know sunken like something going inside that is what we call as a bas okay and something that elevated out from the original surface that we call as a relief okay so here you see this is a temple and uh, uh, this we can identify some certain uh, uh, you know a, a original surface after zero level and this part is sunken it's like getting into in, inside the surfaces okay and something that is projected out something coming out of the uh, original uh, line of the surface so that we call as a relief here this is mostly relief okay here that is something uh, projecting out of the wall So wall is considered as a something kind of a, a zero level, and the balcony is coming out of it. So you can uh, show the depth of the balcony through the psychography. Okay. So that is the difference between the bas is means something sunken, something getting in inside, and relief is something elevated out of the 
valve or stump surface. Now coming to the presentation wise, so how to be present, like we have to consider some points, we have to remember some of the important elements and uh, or components that help you to identify the cyography. So first of all, we have to know what is the position of the object. Okay, uh, maybe it, we can see the object is uh, how we understood from the projection of solids. It is uh, uh, how much far it is away from the vertical plane. What is the ever how how uh, what's the height of the object from the horizontal plane? So those things we have to identify. Okay, front up and here we have to define vertical plane in form of a wall and horizontal plane in form of a ground line, ground plane. Okay, so VP and HP will be uh, identified through these words. So these terms, okay. So we have a position of the object, position of light. So how far is the light? Okay. What is the height of the lights? So that thing we have to identify. And what kind of the light? That is also one thing we have to understand. Is it a, a sun or it is a just a lamp? Okay. Those things also we have to identify. The angle of rays of light shows to the object. Angle of rays means you see. Uh, here you can see this is the uh, what is the uh, this is the height and from the uh, ground surface the angle of light is uh, falling with the 45 degree let us assume okay so from the uh, vertical line of the light and from the angle of the rays we can understand this is the angle of you know, light so there has to be some defined uh, degree of the inclination okay then line of obstruction to light on the object, like edges or sides, like you have this base, this is the edge of the cylinder, and this is also the edge or sides of the cylinder. So this will define as a you know, uh, optimum uh, outline of the shadow. Okay. Similarly for the cube and uh, cuboid or any other prism or pyramids, we have to identify the edges. So these are actually lines of obstruction, isn't it? So wherever the light is falling, it's getting obstructed due to this particular profile of the object. Okay. Then, now then ground lines. Ground lines is understood through, uh, you know, the position of the lights. So wherever there is a light, uh, you can have to understand that from the ground, from the ground plane, there should be the connection. Okay. Like you have to connect, maybe if you say that there is a uh, some hanging or suspended bulb, okay, from the suspended bulb, you have to identify the connection to the ground line, okay, so from that uh, ground position, you have to observe the uh, linear pattern of the uh, object, so here you see this is the, what we call as a, from the position of the height, uh, uh, sorry, from the height, uh, ground position of the light towards the ground position of the object. So that's how we have to connect through it. So that is what we call as a ground line. Okay, you see this ground line. So this will define the you know, optimum outline of the object, of the uh, outline of the shadow. Okay. Then we have a search and shadow casting on object and ground respectively. Okay, so this is the shadow and there is some uh, form of a shirt forming. And here you see the on the top part of the cube, there's a, uh, you know, light is falling, but on the other sides, they are all shirts. Okay. Understood the difference? Yes. Now, okay. And now uh, this is uh, how we are going to represent the 2D drawings. So you see like, uh, Normally, we represent in this manner, like we understood, okay, this is the shadow of the, uh, you know, uh, the main elements of the building. But when you gradually you know, try to identify the different nodes of the uh, points of the lines and the uh, projection of different elements, then the shyography will be more clearer, more clarity will be there. You see, here you cannot identify what is the project, uh, projection, but here you can identify the projection. Okay, 
there is some kind of a, some sort of a projection so this will give you more clarity when you are you not know, drafting with the proper uh, you know identification of the points so that what we are going to represent on the sheet and here you see some different for uh, this is some uh, 2d uh, images you see some uh, formation of the shadow okay it is not a 3d one the 2d uh, presentation if you show the diagraphy it will give you a little bit more lively look of the 3d okay so you are able to define the projection level okay so now going to the next one this is uh, like how you render a particular uh, a design uh, in form of elevation even in the form of uh, in a plan also even in the form of a section also you can utilize the techniques of the geography to give the best impression to your client or to your uh, uh, other uh, panels so they will able to understand the very clearly that what this particular elevation is speaking about so your drawing will automatically speak by itself it will be self explanatory okay so you can very clearly observe there is some kind of projection over here so there is like a, it is extending to some uh, some length so this is how uh, the diagram is presented here also you see uh, there is some sort of a inclination and there is some sort of a chaja chaja that is projecting from the entrance foyer or porch or garage something like that so from there you can able, you will be able to show the projection okay so geography will help you to identify those things here even in the plan also we can show some geography like you have a different level of uh, height of the walls okay some some auditoriums have a higher height and there's some toilets that is linked to the uh, outside of the uh, wall of the auditorium then the height of the toilet will be less obviously you are it is just one floor but auditorium has a very greater height so you can show the differences uh, from the uh, plan itself so that is uh, that is for a bit helpful while you show the geography and also we will be able to show the geography uh, with the help of isometric axonometric oblique perspective any other thing so 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 this is how we are going to implement on our you know drawing sheets now uh, can you tell me what is the difference between we can also uh, do the geography by using the hand rendering but why hand rendering and geography has a difference can you identify that can you tell me uh, like i i have shown the picture image itself so i am i'm sure you will be able to identify the difference what is the difference between this uh, how is it different from hand rendering hand rendering you you can also you know manipulate the source of light and do some shade and shadows so what is the difference who can tell pradimna sir yeah. yeah can you can you tell me the difference what is the difference between this uh, two on the on the left side i am this is something on the right side is something so which one is the geography which one is the hand rendering right side or left side is the hand rendering sir right side one is a hand rendering can you please uh, speak loudly and uh, be very clear sir the right side one is the hand rendering sir on the right side Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, on the right side is the hand rendering. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, just tell me how it is different from the left side. What is the difference? How? Why did you identify the difference? Sir, uh, because uh, uh, the shading and the value with the pencil is different on the right side, sir. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it's been uh, it's been shaded or drafted by hand. and the left one looks computerized sir okay sindhu yes sir yeah what about you what do you understand from this 
means uh, how do you differentiate between these two? Sindhu, I'm asking you. Sir, uh, there is light over in the left side part, so we can't draw it perfectly in the right side. Okay. Uh, how about uh, how about are you seen? Are you seen? Unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. What about you? What do you think about these two difference? So the stylography part is done more perfectly, and the shadows are represented in a proper dimension, whereas in hand rendering, we cannot do that uh, that perfectly. Very good. That is a clear answer I got. So here you see the psychography gives you a, an accurate you know, definition of the shade and shadow. Okay. You are actually using the technical form of shade and shadow, while uh, rendering hand rendering is very much of a manipulation, more of an assumption. Okay, so like uh, in one direction of the light, you won't you won't be able to identify the you know you know the direction of like uh, the ground lines and the the extent of the uh, shadow that is falling. So those things have some flaws. Okay, so rendering is mostly sketching. Okay, you are doing some kind of a, with the manipulation of the light source, while psychography is a more of technical. And when you are representing as an architect you should not use a hand rendering. You, have, you must use psychography techniques. Okay? So that is the differentiation. So now we will uh, uh, come to some different types of questions. Like, uh, <clears throat> I will share this with you. Uh, like, uh, we have to like show some psychography with a cube that is resting on the ground. We start with a very simple basic form of this then we have a rectangular prism uh, resting vertically on the ground and one of its rectangular face is resting on the wall. And a cylinder of the same, like it's resting on the uh, ground. And uh, a circular sunken well, like you have a bore well, let's assume it's a bore well. Sunken well of diameter of something, some dimension, and it's on the ground surface. A square sunken ditch also on the ground surface. The circular projection on the wall a charge projecting from the wall, a niche, that is niche means it is something that is protruding in, in water from the surface. Okay, niche, uh, with semicircular arch, uh, like if you have a certain kind of a, a makkah, you see now you, from the, in the while in the, mostly in the masjid, you see some uh, curved uh, form of the uh, niche. Okay, so there also uh, part of like you have a vertical uh, edges, then you have an arch. So that is some kind of examples. Then uh, we can try out some more uh, practical form of presentation. Like uh, you have a prism and you have to show from with, by using the plan and elevation also. Okay. So we have a certain defining of 30 degree parallel projection and 45 degree light angle of this light sources. Okay. Here you see uh, uh, there are a different form of a, uh, let's see, this is uh, one uh, hollow uh, cuboid or cube. Then you have a prism, cylinder, and uh, without the shadow, it looks very, very normal. Isn't it? It's like something, some sunken well. Okay. And this is uh, something uh, that is uh, sunken as well as it is something projecting out of the surface. So oh, here also we have something that is projecting out of the surface, wall surface. And here you have certain kind of a window or some form of a uh, projection from the wall. So like a charger. So, so depending on the angle of the light sources, we can use uh, certain shadows. Okay. So you have a shadow. This is how it is, looks like. So before we attempt it, you, we need to, you know, uh, now master an art of visualization, imagination, especially. You have to imagine mostly your observation. You go out and just now it, it must be 
no, uh, the sun is uh, at the right position. You go out and have a look at the buildings. So you will see lots of uh, projection coming out of you. So you have uh, some uh, shadows falling, technically falling. That's more practical. That is what we are going to represent. So here you see uh, this particular prism is certain uh, away from the wall. So most of the part of the uh, shadow is falling on the surface. Okay. So now if in any uh, time of the day, if I put it uh, uh, into towards the uh, wall, so what will happen? Some part of the surface, uh, some sorry, some part of the shadow will fall on the wall. Some are falling on the uh, ground. Okay. So here also uh, there will be certain uh, you know differences when you show uh, bring it closer to the wall. So here you see something uh, formation is happening. So we have to identify the points. Like we have to find the points to get the right the profile of the shadow. Okay. Similarly, you see here, uh, due to you know, different uh, days and time, we have a certain uh, shadow. So this shadow is showing over here, it is a little bit lesser in distance than this because this is projecting more. Okay. So here you see the length of the shadow is more and here the length of the shadow is less for this particular thing. So like in different uh, due course of time, there's a, uh, uh, you know, inclination changes. Okay, uh, some, uh, but nobody will say that uh, uh, during, uh, you have to imagine it is falling at uh, one o'clock. You cannot identify the angle actually. So <laughs> it is actually usually assume that it is coming at a 45 degree or 60 degree. So let us see, this is actually the uh, 45 degree. And if I uh, reduce the uh, length or degree of the inclination to 60 degree, like this. If I uh, uh, change the degree of inclination to 90 degree, then this will be the situation. So uh, it's all about the inclination or degree. Now it is about the length or like a how far is the uh, you know light source. The farther the light, then length of the uh, you know length of the shadow will be longer. The closer to the light, then the length of the shadow will be closer. Okay, shorter. So that is also all the differences. So it's, it will be the best thing if you have some uh, object with you in your hand near you, close by. You can use your torch light or you can use your mobile light and observe this shadows. Okay. So so here you see in the elevation how we are going to uh, you know represent the things. Okay, in the elevation. Uh, this is how we have to show. And in the plan, you see the different forms of uh, you know, formation of the shadow. Okay, like for the circular thing, uh, here you can identify that there is something protruding out of the surface as well as it is sunken also, unfortunately. But here it is actually only sunken, only ha has a depth. Okay. And uh, this is about the pyramid. And this is about the, again, uh, this is some sunken. And some parts are sunken, some parts are have some depth. Okay. So this is how we can represent on the ship. So this is the on the HP and uh, this is on the BP. Okay. For the same object, we have to find the inclination of the light source and shiography. So that's all about it. Okay, uh, students, we will try with the uh, basic questions. You just have a look, uh, like you have a cube and that is resting on the ground. The question is saying that to show the shadows of the following object casted on the respective surfaces, consider the angle of the light sources at 45 degree. Okay, so we will work according to this uh, specific a specified position of the lights and we assume that uh, there is some uh, the cube, cube is resting on the ground okay so in that case let us draw a square on the plan in the top view on the top view we know how to draw the top view so so let us see like you have a uh, a cube of 
what is the size of the cube 30 mm so let us draw the 30 mm okay so so you have this uh, a simple cube on the top view so you have to cast uh, let us understand how to uh, cast the shadow assuming that it is coming in the 45 degree inclination so i just take the set square okay of the 45 degree and i would draw in the parallel lines okay so whenever there is a light it always it gets obstructed to this these edges you know these are the edges so it will opt if the light is coming from this direction okay if the light is coming from this direction so this is the sun and the light is falling over here okay so at this point a particular point there will be obstruction so the shadow will fall uh, taking the outline of this particular part so that's why we have to take identify the point of this and draw parallel lines okay and here also we draw the parallel lines okay <clears throat> now uh, sometimes there is a you know the, the height of the uh, let's say the, the height of the cube so it all depends on the you know distance of the light if it is uh, uh, or height of the light also so based on that the height will vary okay so how long it will be it will vary according to that okay now in that case uh, we have to identify the elevation so I draw the elevation. Okay. okay. And it is a cube. So let us see the height of the cube is three centimeter. Okay, this is the height. Now this is the ground plane. Okay, this is the ground plane. Now I would draw the. Now it is coming at the forty-five degree angle. Okay, that means the assuming the light is exactly at the forty-five degree angle somewhere far away. Okay, so we draw the forty-five degree angle from here. Okay, here also the forty-five degree angle. Okay, so so these are the lines. Uh, these are the extent of the uh, <coughs> shadow. Okay, so that means. This is the ground line up till here the shadow is falling. So from there we have to we can easily identify up till where it is. So we draw the projector line on downward. Okay. And this is the point of this point. Okay, you are able to see from this side. You already know this. So this is the point like A, B, C, D, A by P, B by uh, Q. R S only A by D B by C B by S. What is this? Uh, Q by R. Okay. Okay, you have to avoid this is the line. You have to avoid writing over it. You may write it over here. Okay. To avoid any confusion. <clears throat> I didn't got the naming system. Sorry? I didn't got the naming. You didn't get the this point? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I have already explained this in the uh, uh, projection of the solids. Like uh, you have a, suppose, okay, those who have not understood this, please be clear about this. Okay, you have a, a cube uh, on the top view, on the top view, A, B, C, D is the point. Okay, so this is what we want named as A, B, C, D. Okay, and at the bottom part of the, or bottom base of the cube will be like P, Q, R, S. So, uh, when you are looking to this direction and on this direction, in that case, we have to identify according to the first priority. Okay, the first coming A. Okay, then P is coming. So in that case, P is at the bottom. You know, it is uh, below the A. 
Okay, that is what from the top view we see like that. So similarly, B and Q. So it has to be named as B by Q. This is C and R. This is named as C and R. C by R. Okay. Here also we have a D and S. So D by S. Now when you look at the front view, then the first thing is coming A. Okay. So that is why in the front view we have A and D. So A and D is coming in the same line. So it will be named as A by D. Here also B by C because B is the is coming the front view. So whatever coming the front view that has to be named first. That is A P Q B. That is A P Q B. Then whatever behind whatever points are behind it, it will name as B S R C. B S R C like that. Uh, I hope you understood everybody. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes, so now, now you have to identify this uh, projection also. The line, uh, the light is passing through this one. Okay. So now you got the point of intersection. So until here, that is the maximum extent of the shadow. Okay. So now, uh, since this is the, uh, you know, a horizontal line. So similarly, your shadow will also be horizontal. Okay. That is universal truth. It is a fact. Okay. So this shadow is now uh, the object of this, uh, the shadow of this object will be falling in this manner. And the, sorry. And the shadow of this line will be falling on over here. Okay. So that is how we understand by the parallel projection. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, parallel source of light. So now uh, you have to uh, draw some chiography. You have to draw a hatchet like this. Like this, you have to carry on. Better to uh, draw with a big, big gap so that it will save some time. But uh, closer the gap is much better. Okay. So be aware of that. And now you got it. I hope this is very simple actually. It is just uh, use the help of the elevation and plan together. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now how about if I consider that this is the light is coming from this direction. If the light comes from this direction, then the matter will be different. You understand now? So suppose uh, I have a, I draw another, uh, just randomly I'm drawing it. Okay. Now this is the elevation. Okay. So wait a minute. Huh. <laughs> so now uh, if the if the angle of uh, inclination is this way, okay. Uh, let's assume it is a square. In square means it will actually pass through this particular. But if it is coming like this, yes. now here in this case, uh, the light is falling over here. So just the direction change. Okay. Although in there's a difference. Okay. The light is falling uh, according to the timing. Okay. In the morning it is like this. In the evening it will be like this. Okay. So that is how we can represent a different manner, as you wish. So for that case, the answer will be, no, uh, there will be some sort of a uh, differences like this. So you have to find out the point. So, okay, I will draw this for you. So this is uh, one uh, E, uh, you see, let's say one E. This is question number one B.
Okay, so this is your high profit. Okay, so now uh, uh, it is done. So I will uh, make a light source. Okay, over here. Okay, okay there was a little bit, uh, uh, I did not take the right measurement. So this is the right measurement. So, now I will uh, draw this. Okay, so just as you uh, took the maximum uh, you know, uh, direction of the light and this is the maximum uh, shadow uh, that is falling on the ground line. Similar here also, this is the maximum. Part. Okay, so from here we take it as a okay. I got it. So, so now okay. So now uh, here, if it is much farther, okay, it is, if it is uh, much farther, then uh, you have to check out like what is the uh, depth of, it is a 45 degree. So 45 degree means there will be some depth. Okay, in that uh, uh, case, you have to find out uh, how much uh, uh, should it be you know, the length of the uh, shadow. So for here, it's actually merging with the ground line. So here, until here, I can draw the, Biography in this manner. Okay, so this is so either way you can do it. Okay, it's up to you. Okay, so now uh, we will go to the next question. Sir, can you hear me? One, one A, which one? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, like uh, how to take the depth, sir? I didn't get that. How to take the? Depth of the shadow. You took the down. Depth of means this is the maximum. Okay. Yes, sir. Depth. Okay. So if I, if I take it, see, if I, I consider as a 60 degree angle, okay. Or 30 degree angle. Let us take 30 degree angle. Now we will take it out. What's the 30 degree angle from here? Now, this is the maximum portion from here to here, from the main object to the shadow line. This is the maximum point where it is reaching to the, on the ground. Okay. Now, here also I will, uh, I will uh, draw the 30 degree. Okay. Now here, it will be a bit longer because the lower the uh, height of the mid, 30 degree means the height of the uh, your light is less, lower. So in that case, I will again, from here, I will draw the line. So here I find the maximum depth of the, because from B, this is the B point. Okay, so B, C is experiencing the obstruction. Okay, so from there, you are actually cutting through the light, cutting light through it. And that maximum part is falling on the ground surface. From there, you have to drop the projection. Okay. From there, you find this is the maximum depth. Okay. Then from here, you draw the line. Okay. So it will be a little bit different from here. This will be like this. That will be the make that will make a difference. So this is how you find the depth. So, and this uh, doesn't need to be darker because it is get hidden within the shadow. Okay. It's like this. Okay, it gets hidden. Okay. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Is yes, that what sir. you asked? Yes, okay. sir, yes. Okay. 
So this is uh, 30 degree. In case of 45 degree, in case 60, 50. Uh, so based on that, you have to apply on both the cases. Okay, on both the cases. Okay, now shall we move forward? Uh, I think for the uh, second question, it's okay, you can do it because I already showed in this uh, particular thing. It's already the same thing. Okay. Now, uh, let us go to the uh, fourth one, the circular sunken well of diameter 50 mm on the ground, the fourth one. Okay, for that, again, uh, I will erase this one so that I will remain on this particular drawing, keep drawing on this particular place because I can't. Now, uh, let us assume uh, a sunken, uh, circular sunken well. So let us draw a 50 mm diameter. So uh, that is radius is 2.5. So I took 2.5 and let us draw circle. Okay. Now it could be the depth could be something in anything. We can take any depth. So this is the ground line. Okay. And uh, this is the maximum. Uh, size of the okay we imagine there is some depth is there some depth okay let us uh, you can write it down what is the depth please everybody add one more uh, point in the question number four uh, depth of one uh, okay 15 i took 1.5 centimeter 15 mm okay that's the depth just add this one point. Okay. Now here what happens, it is sunken. Okay. So there is no projection above the ground line. So this is your ground plane or ground line. Okay. Below the ground line. Okay. And now this one you are actually representing on the HP. Okay. So now suppose we have a angle of 45 degree, right? So you can take any any angle. Don't don't just stick to the that my uh, assumption. You can assume anything. So if it is 45 degree, or you can take uh, 30 degree. Let's say I am taking 30 degree. I take 30 degree over here. So that means uh, the light is falling over here now. If you do it here, there is no point because it is the hidden part. You can't do any shadow over here. The shadow is falling only within this side. Okay. So this is the maximum part where it is falling. The shadow is covering. So now draw this. Okay. Now imagine this is just uh, uh, what is it? And a, a, a circular part. So you have to find out the radius of the shadow. This is the radius. We had a radius of the circle. Now we have to find the radius of the circle. So we take the diameter. Okay. Diameter. Now you see the intersection point. Okay. Now from there, we get the uh, what is that? Uh, maximum circumference of the circle. Okay. From there, you draw this. Uh, you take the uh, radius of until the intersection point. Are you getting my point? Uh, are you understanding why I'm taking this? And then from there, draw this arc. Okay, and that is what it is. Now, why, what if we take, this? 30 degree from here, you are not going to take the 30 degree from here. Okay, because in the case of only, only in the case of circle, circular base, you have to take 30 degree from the center. From the center. Okay, now you see the intersection point. 
there's uh, there are some differences of intersection point. Are you able to see the difference? I'm trying to make it a little more clarity. And this is 30 degree. Now I will find the intersection point. Okay. Now here you take the radius of here from here and draw the arc. Okay. Then you hatch them. Okay. This hatching is important so that you are indicating the shadow part. Okay. Like this, you have to draw the hatching. Is it clear to you, guys? This is the fourth one. Any doubt? Uh, Barkabi, switch on the camera. I don't know whether you are listening or not. Please be clear. Yes, sir, are these students here or not? Or am I just uh, blabbering here? Sir. They're there, sir, but they're switching off their video once you start uh, explaining. Oh, Not everyone, yeah. but few. Yeah, please, sir, uh, keep the switch on. So that this gives me a feeling that I'm speaking to the students, not only the uh, camera. Okay. So, uh, so is it clear now, Pradimna? Is it clear? Okay. Tanmay? Dharmini? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay. Prabhulika? Yes, sir. Suresh? Yes, sir. Okay. So now the fourth one is done. Now let us go to any other thing. Uh, let us go to the fifth one. Five, number five. A sunken a square sunken ditch. Okay. Square sunken ditch of size of this uh, 30 by 30 on the ground surface. It is nothing, but it is just same as this. Okay. Uh, let me draw the on the side of it. This side it. Uh, 30, right? Uh, did I take it correctly? Oh, sorry. Thirty by thirty, or you can take thirty by forty. Uh, any shape you wish, as wish. Okay. Now let us assume there is some sunken part of it. Uh, this depth, the same depth. Okay. So, and this is a ground line. And this is the maximum depth of the sunken ditch. This is the ditch. Okay. Something getting into the ground. Now, let us assume the 45 degree uh, shadow. Okay. Now, uh, what happens if I take uh, something like uh, more than uh, 30 degree or more than, uh, let's say, 65 degree? Then what will happen? Tell me, anybody? It reaches up to here. It reaches up to here. What will happen? Can anybody tell me how, how are you going to show the shadow over here? Any, any wild guess? Shadow won't protect outside of the object. Exactly, exactly. The entire thing will become shadow. 
so there is no point no there is no point doing all these uh, shades and shadows okay but this is only about the shadow when there is a light that is falling up to minimum distance okay then only you you will be able to show the typography so now here also we will take it so similarly i take a 45 degree from from this side so this is the intersection point okay this is the intersection point so that is the maximum point of this particular uh, line this outline is has a shadow falling on over here okay and uh, while uh, the this uh, shadow uh, shadow of this outline is falling over until here okay so so you can render it like this and so on okay got it so the most important thing is from the elevation you have to find some intersection point that is the maximum depth of the uh, depth means what you are taking the height of this actually the height is falling on the you know on the ground surface and that depth is visible over here okay so now we will go to the niche the last one uh, or you or you want to know something another another one anything else the last one of okay okay after i explain the last one i think you can do anything uh, you don't have any problem So, are you able to see the maximum extent of this? Or yes, should sir. I move? Okay. Okay. Fine. fine. So, what is the the niche of 20 mm means niche means what uh, something that is uh, getting inside okay so on the plan it's like you know um, suppose uh, let us draw two planes okay so this is the uh, vertical plane this is the horizontal plane or you see it is a um, um, in reality, this is the ground line. Okay, from there you have our elevation. Okay, this is the ground line. Consider as a ground line, and this is the uh, horizontal plane uh, over the horizontal plane. So on the top view, on the plan, it is like the initial means you have a wall. Okay, you have a wall on the top view. Let us assume this is a wall, just a wall. Oh. Let us take the thickness of the wall as a two point uh, or point two three. So in this case, what happened? Uh, uh, you are showing some kind of a, some sort of a uh, sunken through the wall, but it is saying twenty mm. So let us uh, assume twenty mm inside. Into access, forget about the walls. So 20 mm inside it. That is a little bit far up. I will take some assumption from 20. Okay. Okay, width is 20 mm and height is 30 mm. Okay, okay, okay. So it is saying this the width of the niche is 20 mm. Okay, the width of the is 20 mm and the depth is not given over here. The depth should be there. Okay, it's like uh, just like just a moment. Okay. 
like uh, you see over here, suppose this is uh, you know a box. Okay, you are looking at in this manner. Okay, you are looking in this manner, and uh, there is a depth. Okay, inside it, inside the wall. So this is the wall. Okay, I, uh, my hand is the wall, and you, it is something inside it. Okay, so this depth is let us uh, assume uh, ten mm. Okay, let us assume. 10 mm. It is just same as this particular thing. No, that was a you know, sunken means on the ground surface, and niche means that is from the elevation itself. Okay, just opposite to it. Now uh, we will draw the uh, elevation. And it says that until 30 mm height, 30 mm height. And 50 mm radius of the, so you have to find out the midpoint of this. Sorry. This is, uh, okay, I took some depth, it is not, uh, Okay, guys, uh, this, this 2.5, that is, okay, 0.15 is the midpoint. Okay, this is the midpoint. And from there, 15 mm radius. And draw the arch, okay. So this is the, you know, something like this, looks somewhat like this, okay. Okay, so now let us uh, start with the psychography. Uh, here you have to first start with the from the uh, horizontal plane. So let us uh, draw the uh, you know 45 degree, 45 degree from it is coming through this direction. Okay, on the top view. So now. Uh, we will draw this. The project is this the maximum extent of the shadow. Okay. So now, how to draw this particular thing? Just you understood this part. Is it? You understood, uh, understood this part. Now, yes. this is a little bit different. Okay. So, so now here, from here, you have to uh, take the intersection point. Here, draw the arch. Okay, so this is the maximum. That's it. Okay. So here, what happened? It is coming over until here, but the shadow it is a circular. So for any form of circular and uh, cylindrical thing, there is a some differences will come. So this is the maximum extent of the uh, shadow for the this particular wall. Okay. Now from there, the there will be some kind of distortion happening with the circular profile. Okay, so so your geography should be I, I request everybody to do the geography properly. I am not doing properly. So please take care of that. So it has to be properly, you know, uh, close, maintained as you have done in the first assignment of the first semester that you have to maintain. Okay. So, so now here, here also you have to show the shadow on the ground. Okay. So this is the, so, and one more thing, if you want to, you know, uh, draw the, shadow on this direction from this direction also in the plan i have done in this direction you can do it in this direction also not a problem okay you can do this direction also you can do go over the direction with this direction so not a problem so here in this case what will happen 
the shadow will come this direction this will be shaded that's the differences okay okay now i think uh, uh, we don't have much time so next class we will learn the other question in the next slide that is about uh, with the proper plan and elevation we will do a proper a uh, little bit more detailed that is more detailed so but this is the weekend is there